I had the OnePlus 11 before this and switched to the Pixel 8 Pro, thinking it would be a better phone. Suffice it to say, I was wrong. Now I have the OnePlus 12, and if they keep this level of quality up, I will never switch to another brand again. Compared to the OnePlus 11, better cameras, faster CPU, brighter display, charges a bit faster, build feels more premium. Compared to the Pixel 8 Pro, CPU is not even in the same realm. OnePlus doesn't get hot unless you're really pushing it for long periods and has so much more raw horsepower. Similar level of premium build quality, but feels more comfortable in the hand due to curved edges. Way faster charging. This makes a huge difference for me because I use my phone heavily all day for both work and personal use. Just being able to boost the charge to 50% quickly is a game changer. Pixel takes 1.5H to fully charge most of the time, even with good chargers. Camera quality is roughly the same. I compared telephoto photos at 6X to Pixel's 5X and detail was very close. As a photographer, I prefer the more natural look you get from OnePlus. Price. This one is obvious. OnePlus definitely wins here. Software is good on the OnePlus. Better than it's ever been, actually. Pixel has a couple of benefits here thanks to AI, but I personally never use them, so I can't really compare. OnePlus 12 animations feel more fluid and pleasing, though. So far, the software has been roughly as stable as Pixel itself, so no complaints there. I hope the phone continues to work as well for me as it does now. I strongly recommend this to anyone except for those who require an S Pen or just have extra money to spend for no reason. It is a super smart device, has some incredibly intuitive features, and simplifies things for you in many ways. I've always used Samsung, so coming from that, I was a bit nervous, but after getting the hang of the gestures and stuff, it's super cohesive and fluid. The search functions, summarization capabilities, AI tech, etc. are all great. Battery life is pretty good as well, nothing to complain about for me. It'll last, from full charge, for about a day and some change with moderate use. The camera itself is already amazing, but they basically process it right after you take it with AI to sharpen and enhance it, and it makes for some of the best pictures I've ever seen come from a smartphone. It has this thing called the Magic Editor, which lets you use some AI tools to make adjustments to images, and that's absolutely mind-blowing to use. All around an awesome phone. I did get it on sale for about $500, but I still think if you're able to afford it, this is a great choice. This mobile device has exceeded my expectations in terms of performance and versatility. It is capable of handling a wide range of tasks and applications with remarkable efficiency. One of the standout features of the S24 is its exceptional ability to maintain a strong and reliable cellular signal, even in remote and rural locations. Unlike my previous device, the S21, which frequently experienced signal loss in these areas, the S24 has proven to be consistently dependable, ensuring uninterrupted connectivity. It is important to acknowledge that cellular service quality can vary across different regions and network providers. However, Based on my personal experience, the S24 has demonstrated exceptional performance in maintaining a stable cellular connection in challenging signal environments. I ordered the iPhone 15 Pro Max over the weekend and so far, I'm enjoying the phone. My previous phone was an iPhone 11, and while it was okay, I'm a heavy user. The 11 had 64 gigabytes of storage, was approaching the five-year mark, and its battery wasn't the best. I just needed an overall upgrade. Anyway, the 15 Pro Max has checked every box for me, battery life, storage, and performance. Now, you don't necessarily need the iPhone 15 to achieve those features, but considering the promotions people get, why not? Here are a few pros and cons. Pros, battery life. I can easily get through my 10 hour shift and still have 60% battery left. Performance, very snappy. I haven't encountered a task it couldn't handle. Speakers, they are noticeably loud. Camera, it's good, as expected since camera improvements are a major focus nowadays. Cons, performance. Performance, I did put performance in pros, but it's here too because of iOS. Though the iPhone 15 has been out nine months. For instance, 
I've experienced a bug where the keyboard wouldn't appear when tapping a text bar. There are other minor bugs, too, which seem unacceptable for an expensive pro phone, though these can be solved with updates. Overall, the phone is good all around. If you want to save some money in the future, I'd suggest the non-pro 15s. Outside of promotion, there's not much to choose from, especially considering the $200 difference.